Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our April 11th edition of Wall Street Winners. We're just racking up the years, that's for sure. We're actually on our 27th year. Started this in 1995. Amazing. Now, it wasn't video back then, but who cares? All right, let's get going here. So, I don't have a strong argument that the next bare leg has started. I have a weak argument. I'm going to go over it with you. But man, my spidey sense is tingling. I'm really looking at this and I'm going to, it's a mixed bag, but I really think that we're starting to see the next leg down. So let's go into some of the indicators. The first one here is the purple predictor. The on balance volume, purple predictor is the on balance volume and look how much weaker it is than the price action. In other words, starting about here, the smart money's been selling. I don't like to fade the smart money. They're, they're smart and they have money for a reason. Dow Jones, basically buying and selling pressure is very, very stable. Notice the Dow never even made it above the highs, whereas the S&P did. So this is still clearly in a bear market. NASDAQ did surmount these highs, barely. And the purple predictor is actually microscopically bullish. So the NASDAQ might be taking over the leadership on the upside and the Dow is leading on the downside. So let's take a look at seasonality. We really have to call it neutral. I had a buy signal up here, but we're halfway through, almost halfway through April and the seasonality, you can see we're sagging. So we're not gonna get a buy signal at all. On the other hand, we are bullish utes. So gotta get along those utility stocks. I know they seem boring, but that's a pretty strong bull market, better than the tech stocks. <laughs> so go and get us some utilities. Now here's the thing, this is a little bit bullish here, but then we start the big leg down, okay? And that's a pretty darn big leg down. Now here's why I'm pretty bearish. We were supposed to drop maybe two or three percent. We dropped 10. We rallied. We we're supposed to rally, you know, five percent. We did that. That worked out pretty well. But the bear move was much stronger than the seasonality would predict. The bull move was right on. I think this next leg will be bigger than seasonality predicts. So we're supposed to peak out here in another week or two. But seasonality can come in a week early. So I think that it's already started. I think this move here has already started. Now, if it hasn't, then we'll see a weak rally this week and that'll be it. Now, asset allocation, you can see here, we are driving money out of the bond market. Bond investors are getting hammered. There's a gigantic bear market in bonds. We had the first the worst, sorry, first quarter in the bond market history. It's, they're being savaged over in the bond market. So what's happening, then we take a look at the risk decator and the risk decator is collapsing. So we put those together and what do we see? We see money coming out of bonds. There's the big bear market. And they're going into things like the utilities or consumer staples. In other words, they're going into defensive, low risk stocks. Now remember, see what you're doing, why you're watching Wall Street Winners is to get this kind of three-dimensional view of the market, to understand what's really going on underlying the headlines. Headlines, by the time you see the headline, by the time I see the headline, it's not news anymore. I'm showing you what's really going on. Global shares also weak. Now, let's stop here for just a second. There's two yield curves that people watch. Two's tens, which is the difference between the two year yield and the 10 year yield. And then there is the three month 10 year. Okay, they both work great, but the three month, you can see here 18 out of the last 18 bear markets, whereas the two's tens was 14. 14 is pretty darn good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. The Fed, but we're not going to get a three month, 10 year signal for quite some time. And the reason is the Fed's not going to raise interest rates to 3% in the next year. They might, it's possible, but they're lagging. Nonetheless, twos, tens with an excellent track record is negative. So 
that would tell us that we're going to have a bear market in spring of next year, March, April of next year. But I think it's going to happen sooner than that. It may be happening right now. Now, this signal gives about a one year lead time. So that could be uh, that could be January. January is usually a weak month. February is a weak month. Uh, you know, there's some possibilities here. So we're going to have a bear market. That's a that's almost a done deal. OK, we can never say it's a done deal, but it's pretty much a, a, a done deal. So the only question we're looking at is when and how much. We have a bare leg that I think we started last week, and I think it's going to carry. I think we're going to just follow the normal seasonality. And the bigger down move will be in the fall. So let's watch this very, very closely. We need to be defensive for sure. Bonds, big, big bear market. Look at that. See you later. Bye bye. They're going to zero. Bond key factors all saying we're going to have higher interest rates on the 10 year sector. Dollar, we talked about this last week. Rectangle formation broke out as predicted because the previous move into the consolidation was a bull market. Therefore, it should break out to the upside. But unfortunately, here we have, we have a rectangle formation here in gold. It should break to the upside. But if the dollars break into the upside, that would normally mean that gold would break to the downside. But this is a legitimate rectangle formation. We'll just have to watch it. But quite frankly, the way to play it is to buy it if it breaks out of this high and or sell it if it breaks this low. Do both. Most of our indicators, you can see our key indicators are bearish. Once again, nobody has any type of indicators like this. You got the Johnny One notes that are always perma bulls for gold. Well, they're idiots because they're always wrong or nearly always wrong. Once every 10 years, they get it right. And then you have other people that don't trade gold because they don't really know anything about it. So you're you're in the right place. OK, crude oil. Very weak high and we're now starting to challenge this low right now and we have declining volume. So this is right now it's looking like a descending triangle, which would mean that we would break this low here and probably drop quite a bit, probably drop into the 70s. So keep an eye out on crude oil for sure. Bitcoin, I got bullish. That didn't work out so well, okay? But I think still overall, you gotta be bullish. I'm out of my Bitcoin. I actually bought Ethereum and then got stopped out over here for a very small loss, but I'm still bullish. I'm still bullish and I would want to buy Ethereum on the break of this high. This is Bitcoin here, but you see what I'm saying? I would, I would do it up here. So, you know, take and look at the volumes, very sluggish. I mean, really, you might as well trade the stock market. <laughs> hey, everybody, Courtney Smith here. And I just wanted to kind of reveal with you one of my secrets of my success. And that is I use a website called stockbutler.com, stockbutler.com. And the reason I use it is because it saves me so much incredible time. And it was based on my forms of analysis. The Stock Butler was developed by one of my brilliant students. Of course, all my students are brilliant. You know that. And uh, he designed it around my technique for selecting, for fundamentally selecting stocks. So all you have to do is you come here, you go to rate, you go to best of the best. That's the name of the technique. And bingo, there's the list. And then since there's only four stocks there, no problem. Go up to rate, go down here to advanced stock list. I usually change this to main e-table, update the list, <clears throat> anything in green, I'm interested in. Now, I know that these are fundamentally powerful stocks. Now, all I have to do is go find the correct technical entry and exit point. So, Stock Butler saves me a tremendous amount of time, keeps me focused on only the best of the best stocks instead of wasting my time on other garbage. All right, everybody. We'll see you later.